So you just got diagnosed with herpes or maybe you just started dating someone and they disclose to you that they have a history of herpes. Herpes is widespread and also widely stigmatized. So let's get down and dirty and talk about it. We're going to break down the virus piece by piece so that you have a better understanding of it and hopefully a little bit more compassion for those people who've contracted the virus. My name is Megan Galloway and then in the next few videos, we're going to talk all about the most common forms of STIs. What are STIs, you ask? It stands for sexually transmitted infections. Most of you are probably still saying STDs, which is sexually transmitted diseases, but STIs is now commonplace and is an effort to reduce the stigma surrounding these infections. So remember, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to follow along with the series and learn more about women's health and pregnancy in the future. So to reduce the stigma, let's first talk statistics. It is estimated that globally, 80% of the population carries the HSV virus. HSV stands for herpes simplex virus, and it is comprised of two different virus types, HSV-1 and HSV-2. Most of these people have never had an outbreak, but if you were to do a blood test and check for antibodies to either of these viruses, 80% of the people would either have HSV-1, HSV-2, or both. Most of these people were exposed in childhood because HSV-1 is the predominant herpes virus, and it is mostly associated with cold sores. So children whose parents had cold sores when they were growing up, if they got kissed while their parents had a cold sore, then poof, they have the herpes virus. Because of our sexual practices, HSV-1 actually accounts for one third of genital outbreaks these days. If you have oral sex with somebody who has HSV-1, then you can actually get HSV-1 on your genitals. I once had a patient ask me if HSV-1 turns into HSV-2 when it's transmitted to the genitals during oral sex. The answer is no. HSV-1 is always HSV-1 and HSV-2 is always HSV-2. Almost 100% of cold sores are HSV-1. However, genital sores can be either HSV-1 or HSV-2. So if you contract HSV-1 through oral sex, then you still have HSV-1. It's just on the genitals. Speaking of genital herpes, let's talk more about that because that's what most of us are actually concerned about. So if you've contracted HSV-1 or HSV-1, V2 on your genitals, they present the same, but the viruses do behave a little different. So HSV1, for example, has a recurrence rate of only once every other year, whereas HSV2 has a recurrence rate of four to six times yearly. Unfortunately, HSV is not curable, but it is treatable and manageable. When I first diagnose women with herpes in my office, it is often devastating news. They wonder, how did I contract it? How do I tell my partner? How does this affect my dating life in the future? My job is to educate them like I'm educating you so that they feel like they understand the virus more and therefore can manage it more appropriately and have more power over it in the future. One of the most important things to note is that if you just had your first genital outbreak of herpes, you may not have contracted it from your current partner. Since 80% of us carry around this virus in our system, it doesn't matter when you contracted it. You can have an outbreak at any time in life. Both first-time outbreaks and recurrent outbreaks typically happen because of what we call a trigger. Most people get triggered when their immune systems are low, when they're feeling particularly stressed, or sometimes with vigorous sexual activities, which is usually things that include a lot of friction. Many people who get their first outbreak blame their current partner. They think, oh, my current partner has been cheating on me. But this is simply not the case most of the time. So before you get in a negative headspace about it, have a conversation with your partner. And remember that you may not have contracted it with them. You may have actually been exposed to it long time ago and are just now having your first outbreak. So is your mind spiraling now that I told you that 80% of us carry this virus and you're wondering, Ugh, have I ever had a herpes outbreak and I just didn't know it? It's high highly unlikely. Most primary outbreaks, which are first time outbreaks, are significant. You usually have multiple sores on your genitals. You might also have pain with urination, um, swelling. You may have tailbone pain or leg pain. Some people even get fevers and chills and it lasts for a long time. So it's unlikely that you've ever had a herpes outbreak without knowing it. But sometimes it happens. I sometimes diagnose women because they come in and think, 
think, oh, I just cut myself shaving and I have a little sore on my vulva. And then when I test them, it actually comes back as herpes and they're surprised. The general rule of thumb is if you have a sore and you think it might be herpes, you need to get tested really quickly because once the sore resolves or it's mostly healed over, that swab isn't going to come back positive. And while we can test blood for herpes, it doesn't necessarily mean that you had an outbreak. It could just mean that you're carrying the virus. So when should you get this blood test? The answer is very rarely. I pretty much never test for the HSV virus when I am screening people for routine STI screening. Because even if it's in your bloodstream, it doesn't mean you're ever going to get an outbreak. In fact, most people don't. So all that information does is make people worried and confused. The one time I do think the blood work can be helpful is if you have had an outbreak, but your partner hasn't. Because if you've had an outbreak and you have HSV-1 and your partner also has antibodies in their blood to HSV-1, then it is next to impossible for you to pass genital herpes onto your partner because they actually have the antibodies to fight off that virus. So how do you protect yourself and protect other people from herpes? First and foremost, if you have an active cold sore or an active genital lesion, avoid prolonged kissing, oral sex, anal sex, and vaginal sex. This will protect your partner from having that virus passed along for the most part. Unfortunately, there is something called asymptomatic shedding, which is when the virus sheds and there is no active sore to be seen. The good news about the herpes virus is that most of the time it's dormant, meaning it's sleeping. And when it's dormant, it cannot be passed along to anyone. Only when it's active, actively shedding, aka with asymptomatic shedding, unfortunately, or with active sores, then that's when it can be passed along. The other thing that's important is using condoms. Condoms protect most people from genital herpes, and it's especially important if you have an active lesion and you're still planning on having sex, which I would really encourage you not to do. Most people who have genital or oral herpes have what's called a prodrome before they get an outbreak. This prodrome is a series of symptoms like tingling, burning, itching or feeling a little bit of swelling either on their lips before a cold sore or on their genitals before they get a genital outbreak. When you are prodroming, the virus is active. So before you even get a sore, if you're feeling like something might be happening, you need to avoid all those sexual activities. The bad news about asymptomatic shedding is that you can pass the virus along without even knowing that you have it active at the time. The good news about asymptomatic shedding is that you you can take a medication daily if you have HSV2 that will almost 100% of the time prevent you from actively shedding the virus. Unfortunately, the data doesn't really suggest that taking the daily medication when you have HSV-1 is all that helpful in preventing asymptomatic shedding, but HSV-1 rarely has outbreaks, and so it's less important to take a daily med. In fact, I've had patients who had HSV-1 back in their 20s, and now they're 50 years old, and they never had an outbreak again. The medications used for the herpes virus are antiviral medications. They don't kill the virus like like I said, it will be in your system forever, but they do keep it from shedding and they treat the virus when the virus is active. Antivirals also reduce the severity and the length of the symptoms. So at the first sign of prodrome or at the first sign of a genital or oral lesion, you want to make sure to start those antiviral medications. Both HSV-1 and HSV-2 are treated with the same antiviral medication, and it's used whether we use it for preventing asymptomatic shedding or whether we use it to treat the virus itself. If you have genital herpes, I highly recommend you disclose this to your current and or future partners. Of course, this is up to you, but in order to help prevent the spread of this virus, it's important to give people the ability to make decisions about their own health. The good news is if you have HSV-1 and your partner has ever had a cold sore, then it's next to impossible to pass that virus along to them. But making sure you both have the same antibodies by getting blood work done can be helpful in determining that. Speaking of cold sores, it's also not a bad idea to tell your partner if you've ever had cold sores. We think very little about cold sores in our culture, but 
if cold sores turn into genital herpes for your partner, then they have a sexually transmitted infection. And we do think a lot about that in our culture. Okay, so let's recap. What have we learned? Number one, herpes is comprised of two viruses, HSV-1 and HSV-2. HSV-1 can either be oral or genital herpes, and HSV-2 is almost 100% of the time genital herpes. Number two, herpes is a virus that can unfortunately never be cured. It will stay in your bloodstream for the rest of your life. But 80% of the population carries this virus, so you are not alone. Number three, herpes can be spread both by oral contact and genital contact, not only when sores are present. This is called asymptomatic shedding. Number four, antivirals are helpful in both preventing an outbreak and at treating outbreaks when they happen. Lastly, prevent the spread of herpes by wearing condoms and talking to your partners. If you have questions about herpes, feel free to write them in the comments below. But remember, people who have genital herpes already carry around the weight of having that virus. And I would ask you to keep your judgments to yourself. Most of us carry the herpes virus. Unfortunately, some people are unlucky and have a genital outbreak, and some people are lucky and don't. So if you are one of the lucky ones, please be kind to those who are not as lucky as you.